Hello, my friend. So it appears we're talking about love, companionship, connection, and community today. Who you are calling into your life, who might be leaving your life, and perhaps the person or people that you most want to be around, whether you know who they are or whether you simply have a yearning or an idea of who they might be. If you found this video, it's my perspective that it's no accident, that you have found this at the right place at the right time, and that there is something in this video for you that will be of assistance on your journey as you take these steps through living your life and truly attune to and call in the experiences you want to live most now, moment to moment to moment. Whether this is our first time or millionth time meeting, I'm Danielle Lin. I am a reality, creation, explorer, collaborator, and one who hosts conversations and experiences like this through our channel here, through some of the books and experiences that I have linked in my description, if you would like to go visit them at some point. And today in our conversation, I imagine you will find perspectives, you will find attunements, or you will find something here that may be of service to you as you reconnect with who you truly are and better attune yourself to the community, to the special person, to the people it is that you most want to spend time with here and now. Now, on some level, I would say, if you notice our comments in the videos here, there are more and more of us that are gathering, that are sharing our experiences, that are sharing our resonances. This really inspires me. You really inspire me. Because you can only find these videos when you are resonating at a certain level in your experience, which means that each of you has, again, from my perspective, on some level in your heart, a genuine desire, impetus to connect authentically with others. And I emphasize the word authentically because many of us have experienced inbuilt habits of connecting at a program societal level or at a level of perceived expectation, uh, consciously or unconsciously, right? This is something uh, that I myself have experienced, you know. I've moved through life a lot wearing many masks. And it's been more recently, probably within the last couple years or so, in which I have felt the most myself and able to speak clearly and be clearly myself whether it's in these video conversations, whether it's uh, connecting with friends or meeting new people or connecting with clients, whatever it is that I'm doing, I have personally found it more and more natural to be whoever I am in the moment and connect from that premise. And for myself, it has been a highly empowering experience. You do find that there are some people who are not into what you have going on. But you also find more quickly, more rapidly, people who do resonate with what you have going on. I have found for myself there is a certain level of inner trust. There's a certain level of trust that as you engage with the world the way you truly are, you will find certain doors that close and certain doors that open very wide. And if you don't take any of it very personally, you don't take it personally perceived rejection, you don't even take it personally perceived um, adulation and admiration, you can navigate life uh, with a lot of, I want to say almost relative ease because you're not looking for the external reflections that people offer you to define yourself. Instead, you can simply interact with them um, 
as experiences that are appearing in your reality rather than definitions of who you are. Now, I know in previous videos, I've talked about the mirroring of reality. And what I mean by this is even when we are experiencing, and this is an experience for myself, so you know, please explore this as it feels good to you. For me, when I'm experiencing the mirroring of reality, it's still not a judgment to myself. It is simply alerting me what I am currently focusing on, what I am currently attuning to, what what I am committed to, what what patterns I am cultivating. It's not a definitive description, be all, end all, of who I am from a wider consciousness perspective. Uh, many, many who follow the traditions of uh, spiritual awareness and inner exploration might agree that who I am is the consciousness, the expanded totality of source energy of which at the root of our being, we all are the oneness. And therefore the oneness contains within it all possibilities and all the unmanifest and <laughs> we're going into paradox. <laughs> and the reason I share that, the reason I say that is because when you're, to me, when you're on this channel on some level, you're choosing to allow yourself to navigate life with as much clarity and as much freedom as you dare to allow yourself to. And one of the ways you are doing this is by really observing life from a lens of moving beyond judgment Judgment has to it a uh, emotional charge to it. It has a sense of things being right or wrong and can have a very strong um, constricting or feeling of righteousness that is based in separation. Rather, the invitations here are to use discernment, which still allows you to say yes or no to things. It doesn't mean you need to automatically um, pretend that everything is. Uh, okay with you or not. However, it allows you to make the choice of yes or no without needing to place a, I guess for lack of a better word, judgment on something, without needing to emotionally uh, justify or tell a story about the reason you're saying yes or no. It's simply enough for you to know that when you are choosing the path right now in this current experience you are of the most fulfillment given the choices you've made that oh, this is a yes and this is a no and so therefore i'm choosing to move here we can move that way it's fairly precise but often what we what i have found what i run into is where i have places of resistance or where i've had places of fear or where i've had places um where things have seen a little more sticky in those areas are places where I have had attachment to outcome or attachment to people or attachment to specific situations. And this brings us back to one of our original premises here, talking about the people, the connection, the situations that we are navigating. You see, when we allow ourselves to use discernment instead of judgment, when it comes to people, when it comes to our communities, when we don't look at people's opinions of us as the definitive description of who we are, we allow ourselves to stand in our true strength and power. We then develop enormous magnetism. You may have seen other creators talk about, you know, be detached. It grows your magnetism. Be disinterested. It grows your magnetism. Well, you know, it's not about pretending to be bored or not caring. Um, there's a nuance to it. It could come across that way. What it really is, is it's understanding that no one perceived outside of you can actually um, amplify you or decrease you without your consent. So no one outside of you actually has that power. 
And even when it feels like really, really, really they have that power or like, oh, but my boss does or this person does or my parents or, you know, the government, whatever it is. From my experience, from my experience, every time that is a story. And it's not a judgment. If you are, if you are like really deep in that story, some stories are like really engaging, like they're really full on, you know, and some stories in order to uh, shift beyond them being your given reality, sometimes, um, sometimes they require sitting with discomfort and a lot of focus and awareness to shift through them. Sometimes it can happen instantaneously. It is why the path of being an inner alchemist with yourself can, can seem like quite a grand adventure. Because we come across these junctures, these challenges that afford us opportunities to be really present with life in ways that, that many have not dared, that they shy away from, they turn away from. They go along seeking outside of themselves rather than being present with the moment and seeing what the information provides them. And see, when you do this, you allow yourself to see through the mirror what life is saying to you, what patterns you're choosing, which allows you to be more clear about who you're attracting and what you're into and why you're into it, which allows you to discern between relationships that subconsciously you're calling in because on some level you're attracted to a destructive pattern or relationships you're calling in that are actually expansive and enjoyable and engaging. One of the um, videos I had seen recently was actually uh, Bashar. If, you've had, if you don't know Bashar, you can look it up. But Bashar explaining um, a perspective on relationships that I thought was useful. So we'll share it here. And the, and the simple question was like, how do I know if a relationship is good for me? And what I recall um, that was shared as the answer to that is that the relationships that feel that, that are genuinely uplifting to you, your consciousness on all levels are the ones where you say, I feel most like myself here. I feel I am able to be my most self. I am the most accepted on all layers that I am in this connection. So whether this is romantic, whether this is a friendship, business partnership, client, whatever it is, you feel the capacity, you experience the capacity to be your most self there. These may be considered, if you are on the path of consciousness, of, of wanting to truly live as you are, these may be considered what you are attuning for in the relationships. And relationships that may deliver like a high, that may deliver an exciting feeling, um, that may deliver, you know, a rush, but maybe bring on other levels a lot of sorrow. Uh, there's no judgment. Like those are, those are also experiences that we can sometimes uh, create for ourselves. But if you're wondering like, well, when does it stop or how do I change this or shift this? Something that I have learned is that we don't change people. We shift what we say yes to, what we agree to, what we sign up for relationships. And then we allow either the people themselves to choose to come along with us to the new premise, or we allow them to shift out of our reality so that the appropriate connections can come in. And I would offer and suggest that it's not abandonment to do this with people. When you are operating from the presence of who you truly are and if and when your, your choices and your values no longer align with another person, it can actually, from my experience, be very destructive to attempt to hold on. I don't see it as being helpful to either party to do so. It's actually quite loving to be clear with oneself and another about where your values are so that you can each decide if it's appropriate to continue or appropriate to give space so each of you can have the appropriate space for the partnerships you want. And it's not about judging either person for what they choose. Some people might choose to have, continue to have destructive partnerships. That's just a choice of an experience they're having. Whatever you choose that's appropriate for you, that's your business. And if you focus more energy on that, you, I find, in my reality, you arrive at that premise with so much more speed and clarity. And so... 
my friend, whatever you're going through in your relationships, if you've let people go, if you've had challenges, I invite you to take heart, especially if you're at this point in the video, because there's been something here that's been offered that's been profound for you to really, really attune to what your values are and what you're signing up for and who you're connecting with now so you can more clearly draw in your love, community, work partnerships, anything it is you want. You have that ability on every level. And I know it can feel very intense. If you're kind to yourself, if you're deliberate, if you're loving and you're present, you can be that love with yourself first and foremost. Be that love with yourself. I have found the more that I am caring with and having relationship with myself, the higher quality of relationships I magnetize into my life on all levels. Because I know the standard by which I treat myself. And this is one of the power, one of the powers of affirmation work, of deliberate work. And I'm so glad you're here in this video. If you feel inspired, please share in the comments a message for yourself, a message as though you're talking to yourself. And in doing so, everyone else in the comments is going to benefit from it as well, because we're all just reflecting. We're all just reflecting to each other the vibration that we are. And also, you can feel free to leave a comment that you think might be a question or an inspiration to this. Because remember, we are all interconnected. And everyone here is an alchemist at play. Let's see what we can amplify together. And with that, my friend, I have in the descriptions some links, resources for you, a new flow group starting soon. And so that's something to look forward to. And of course, as always, if this has been helpful, you can subscribe, like, and share. And I look forward to our next conversation together. And may this conversation have amplified your magnetism in ways that truly delight you at your core level. Talk soon.